Hi guys and welcome back to Dudley Central. In this video I want to show you my latest uh, build on the layout. It is a Metcalf viaduct and uh, this is an absolutely superb kit uh, by Metcalf. It's been around uh, a little while now uh, but I really wanted to try and base it on uh, one of the local viaducts in Dudley uh, which is Parkhead and uh, to do that I wanted to do some added effects to the kit uh, to give it a bit of weathering uh, and bring it to life a little bit. So I hope this video uh, is helpful to you um, and it might give you some little tips and tricks uh, to enhance your kits as well and uh, please feel free to leave a comment and subscribe. So I think one of the key things to do when starting a project like this is to actually research uh, what you're basing it off. And as I say, mine is Parkhead Viaduct and uh, these were the images that I worked from. Uh, one thing that really struck me uh, when I first saw it was the considerable staining uh, which is on the viaduct. I think it's from limestone, um, but it's certainly quite heavy in uh, a lot of places. So it was quite important to me actually to try and recreate this effect um, and as you'll see I used chalk uh, to quite good effect um, in recreating it. Some other uh, notable uh, parts to it, so there was um, quite a few patris plates um, which were uh, along the viaduct and these are often put in by uh, structural engineers to, to stabilise the structure. Um, so I really wanted to make sure I had that on my uh, viaduct as uh, they were quite prominent on the, uh, the parkhead version, the viaduct. Um, there were also some uh, some tie bars. Um, they're slightly out of shot. I couldn't get a good image of those. Uh, and I did briefly look at uh, adding them, um, but then I did think it might be a little, little bit too much because uh, this viaduct, I think, is about eight or nine arches. And uh, I've only got four in this kit and I didn't want to put too much on because uh, I think less is more, uh, perhaps. And then obviously the final little bit uh, was uh, some graffiti tags. Uh, again, I didn't want to go too crazy on this um, just because I think it can detract from it uh, if you just cover it in graffiti. And actually looking at the viaduct, it's not too bad. <laughs> So one of the first things uh, that I did, um, which is actually a tip in the Metcalf instructions, was uh, to just use a HB pencil and uh, just go over all of the edges, um, just trying to get rid of all the sort of remnants of card, as it were. Um, so on this one, it was all the corners and all of the kind of edges that have been layered up. Um, so you've got quite a few along the uh, the piers in the middle um, and then also along the, uh, the patrices and uh, the walls at the top. It's definitely worth doing uh, on any of your Metcalf kits. I've done it to most of them now and it does seem to hide uh, the white and it does kind of bring the models uh, to life a lot more. And, um, you can obviously shade these a bit darker around the edges if you want to use that as a method for weathering as well. So the next step was to look at doing the white staining on the viaduct and as I have mentioned I used chalk for this. Um, I got a cheap pack of chalk uh, from, it was from the works, it was a pound um, for a pack of 20 or so. Um, I was only really needing the white um, but and uh, yeah you got a whole array of colours for that but um, layering onto the viaduct uh, nice and easy uh, as you can see it was just uh, a case of just um, lightly doing it over the brickwork and uh, just building up with layers uh, the beauty with the chalk is actually if you you're not happy with it uh, you can just wipe it off with your finger uh, or some um, some tissue um, and you know, it, it's actually quite fun uh, building it up, and you can see how effective it is um, in getting that white staining on there. What I liked about the chalk was uh, that you could still see the brickwork showing through, 
Um, I did look at doing uh, dry brushing and painting um, and these would have worked on perhaps uh, a plastic structure uh, but on the card uh, the chalk was definitely the best option for doing this and um, as you can see now it's really starting to resemble uh, the prototype. So when I came to do the insides of the arches uh, again using the chalk uh, to get the staining effect uh, I used it in a slightly different way uh, to how I did the exterior um, two reasons really so I tried to do the uh, chalk on its side and also brushing it along with the arch um, the main reason uh, for doing it along with the arch is you've got to imagine how this staining is moving across the structure the staining naturally kind of occurs in the top and works its way down the brickwork and uh, by using the chalk in this way it kind of followed how um, staining in real life has built up over time and I did find this was quite useful in getting some streaking effects uh, along the brickwork and um, I hope you agree it looks quite effective. So once I'd finished doing the white staining uh, I've then turned my attention to the um, the very top of the arch and uh, the photographs seem to show this is very dark um, almost smoke coloured um, dirt that had accumulated right at the top um, so I really wanted to to mimic that and uh, to do that I used the uh, the Humbrol weathering powders and just out of shot I would mixed a palette with the uh, dark earth and the smoke uh, to get a really dark brown uh, kind of weather powder and uh, all I've used is a thick brush and I've just brushed this from side to side just trying to follow that streaking uh, that I mentioned earlier and uh, just again to get some sort of effects and showing how the, the weathering has occurred over time. So the next thing I wanted to do, I wanted to add a bit of uh, greenery uh, which had accumulated on the viaduct. Uh, looking at the pictures, uh, it looked like it was starting to uh, gather underneath um, the arches. I don't know whether that's due to the, the damp conditions or, or whatever. Um, and I wanted to just put some on the, the outside as well. Um, so what I did to do this, I, I used some of the, the glue and glaze glue that deluxe materials make. The only reason I did that, uh, it's something I know sets clear and there won't be any issues with that. And then I also used some Woodland Scenic screen foliage uh, and this seemed to stick quite well. And what you can do with that is tease um, material out so you can really thin it out and it can look very realistic. Uh, so yeah, I, I glued it to the viaduct and actually after doing it, I looked at it and I think I went a bit too heavy on it um, and what was really good about this foliage stuff is you can really uh, pull it apart and really thin it out and by the end of it I was quite happy with the level um, again it, it's one of those less is more kind of instances I, I think you can go a bit too heavy on, on stuff like that and uh, it did look much better after I'd removed some of the foliage so the last sort of bit I did to the uh, viaduct in terms of weathering uh, was to add the graffiti and as I said at the start of the video I wanted to keep this fairly light, uh, I didn't want to go too over the top. So I think on the viaduct I've only got the two tags, um, the observant amongst you will realise I've used the, uh, the Dudley Central logo uh, as one of the tags. Uh, at first what I did was I drew it out with pencil and uh, once i had done that i then just dipped the pencil in some uh, white paint and i just retraced over the original lines that i went over uh, i just used some uh, white acrylic paint i think i used my son's uh, just poster paint stuff uh, nothing special so that was the dudley central tag and uh, i was quite happy with how that one came out I then did uh, the exact same thing for the local football team, which is Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, this is a tag which seems to be on the Stamba Mill viaduct uh, near Starbridge. Um, 
and that's been from the second line. That's what my uh, station's set on, uh, so I thought that would be appropriate. The last step uh, for the viaduct was just to add some acrylic matte varnish, giving it a spray along all the sides and the top and bottom. But the patras plates themselves, uh, I just used a bit of scrap card uh, that I got from the kit and this was two centimeters by one centimeter and I just used a bit of the cap and stones, uh, a rogue little bit of, uh, of plastic uh, to form um, the, uh, the patras plate uh, and after that I just gave it a quick spray with some brown plastic coat uh, aerosol that I had lying around and then finally I gave out a quick spray of matte varnish as well and these have now been blue tacked onto the uh, viaduct uh, the reason I've done that was primarily because I'm not sure if I want to keep them um, I have considered 3D printing them um, only because it might look a little bit better and it might be a bit more true to scale uh, but for now I'm quite happy I've had a look and they will do the job. So that's it for now. Um, I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, I, re I was really keen to get this weathering in place uh, before I start messing around with track laying uh, on top and forming the land around it. Uh, so it was important to get everything in place. Uh, but I will now sort of focus my efforts towards getting uh, track properly laid and trains running. Uh, I hope you find this video uh, useful um, and please feel free to leave a comment and subscribe.